11 rare B-horror movies that aired on USA up all night. You could rate all kinds of guilty pleasures, and it would be very challenging to displace a fun night of B-horror movies from the top of this list. Those who have enjoyed a decent late night television slot for themselves and had a taste in B-movies were a regular viewer of USA Up All Night. This cable television series was telecast on the USA Network and made our Friday and Saturday nights eventful. People went for parties and dates while we, the B-movie fans, thrived on this show that had an amazing collection of horror flicks that would run back to back through the night. It had some entertaining cult classics and movies from other genres, but it was the horror movies that caught our fancy. In this video, we have grouped together some of the most entertaining B-horror movies from this series that will provide for surreal nostalgia if you opt for a rewatch now. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Neon Maniacs 1986 The inhabitants of San Francisco are faced with some strange murders and mutilations. Some of the locals who are out at night are being stalked and killed by something vicious. A group of teenagers discover some deadly monsters that live in a tower of the Golden Gate Bridge. However, the authorities refuse to believe their claims. Time is running fast and these water-soluble monsters can be fought with only one weapon. Do the teenagers have it in them to face these creatures? Neon Maniacs personifies the unique brand of cheesy 80s horror that entertain an entire generation. The titular monsters are fun to watch with their slime oozing grotesque appearances. Each has its own method of killing, and throughout the film, these monsters keep the determined teenagers on their toes. This film wastes no time in plot development and goes straight to the point. Low budget reflects on the campy effects, but nothing takes away from the mindlessly juicy fun on offer for the audience. You have some exciting moments on offer, such as the runaway train sequence and the attack at the dance. As for the acting performances, they are surprisingly decent, and the movie even comes with an eerie electronic score that adds to the ambience. The makers end the movie on a note from where they could pick up for a sequel, but that never happened. All we can say is that nothing heals a grieving heart better than a thorough B-horror entertainer from the 80s. Taurus Trap 1979 A group of teenagers set off looking for their missing friend near a secluded roadside museum. Near this place is a mansion that houses a shut-in psychopath with supreme telekinetic powers. He uses these powers to kill off the group of friends one by one. He has a surprising collection of mannequins that seem surprisingly alive. He uses them to keep him company. But what is the deep secret regarding the lively mannequins? This movie is eerie to the core with a dark setting and unsettling mannequins and masks. It is one of the hidden gems from Paramount Pictures, a production house that dared to explore with some innovative concepts within the slasher genre back in the day. The director, David Schmoller, previously directed Puppet Master and proves his credentials yet again with another creepy venture. While you may perceive this as the conventional B-movie, the script throws in a few surprises that will leave you stunned. The effects are also pretty decent and help the convincing setup to make things interesting for the viewer. You would actually feel the vulnerability of the scared group of youngsters who are panicking at the crisis. The veteran actor Chuck Connors adds stability to the acting performances, and Pio DiNaggio pitches in with a mesmerizing musical score. Overall, Taurus Trap is a must-watch among the movies that aired on USA Up All Night. Two, 1987. A promiscuous prom queen from Hamilton High was accidentally killed in 1957 by her jilted boyfriend. After 30 years, her spirit comes back for revenge. Her boyfriend Bill has now become the principal of Hamilton High, and his son is about to attend the prom. 
the evil spirit possesses his girlfriend Vicky and is determined to seek vengeance from Bill. He must face his old deeds one more time as karma catches up. Prom Night 2 is probably the best entrant in the neglected and underappreciated Prom Night series. The plot is a reflection on several aspects such as youth corruption, disruption of morals, and even social issues and religion. There are some terrifying scenes, such as the one where Vicky is alone in a classroom and it appears as though someone is writing the words, help me, from inside the board. As Vicky approaches, she is pulled into the inky blackness. Some jaw-dropping death scenes, among which the locker room scene stands out. The stylist special effects are pretty impressive for the low budget, and the well-executed set pieces make for a great viewing experience. The character transformation for a perfectly moral Vicky into a crazy lady with violence and lust after her possession is carefully carried out. There are clear influences of the movie like The Evil Dead and A Nightmare on Elm Street, but even then, this stands out as a fine specimen among the flicks aired on USA Up All Night. Cat People 1982 Irina is a beautiful young woman whose sexual awakening brings with it some deep dark secrets of her family. She belonged to a clan called the Cat People who sacrificed their woman to leopards to mate with them. Irene was raised by her adoptive parents, but things take a turn for the worse when she meets her older brother Paul. This movie is a remake of the 1942 version of the film that dealt with a similar concept. However, Paul Schrader's remake introduced an innovative Freudian theme to make things complex and erotic. The sensual journey is full of blood and gore, but cannot be blatantly categorized as just another slasher flick. Nastasia Kinski is perfect in the role of the incredibly beautiful Irina, while Malcolm McDowell is impressive as her crazy brother. Irina's transformation from the Holy Virgin to Femme Fatale is nothing short of incredible. There are people who will load this movie for some extreme gore and considerable sexual activity, but that is precisely the drawing point for many others. The musical score is out of the world and even won a Golden Globe nomination. If you are tempted to tread on the wild side, experience this insane journey of cat people. Waxwork 1988 It all starts off peacefully with the owner of a wax museum inviting some high school teenagers for a private exhibition at midnight. The teenagers soon discover that there is much more to the museum than what meets the eye. Once inside, two from the group are sucked into the story being portrayed through the exhibits, and the other two manage to get away. With no one believing their narrative and their friends missing, they learn from a man that the owner is set to unleash evil on Earth. The story is wacky to start with, but offers plenty of excitement. Imagine an exhibit that makes you a part of it. If the monsters on display manage to kill you, the absence of CGI is a blessing in disguise, and you will enjoy the practical on-your-face effects made to shock you. Anthony Hickox makes his debut as director with this one, and straight away, you get a glimpse of the talent of this man. The cast is a mix of those from Gremlins and The Omen, and they bring their horror flick experience into play. There is a clever mix of horror and comedy that offers plenty of entertainment with all the mutilated flesh, spraying blood, and dismembered hand that lives on its own. Ignore the cheesy bits in the plot and the major loopholes because it is way too much fun for a movie night with friends. Nine Seven Six Evil, 1988. What would you do if you found the telephone number that connects you to Satan? This is specifically the ordeal faced by Spike and Hoax after they stumble upon the number 976 Evil. Whoever makes a call to this number receives supernatural powers that turn them into evil killers. Spike gets bored of using this line, but Hoax loves the thrill of using it for revenge on his bullies. But what happens when they bite off more than they can chew? Robert Englund is no stranger to B-horror movies, and he carves out yet another exciting narrative with this one. One of the first criteria for horror flicks to make you care for them is to have characters that you sympathize with or care for. In this case, the protagonist Hoax is a weak guy who will do anything to get stronger. His mother is hilarious with her extreme religious fanaticism, and the teen outcast exacts satisfying revenge on those who tormented him, you are bound to feel the adrenaline rush. The likes of Stephen Jeffries and Sandy Dennis pull off some decent performances. The FX is pretty good and makes things believable for a low-budget effort. 
there are some minor inconsistencies in the plot, but overall, 976 Evil makes for a fun watch on a lonely evening. Rabbit 1977 A young woman named Rose meets with an accident that disfigures her face, chest, and abdomen. An experimental plastic surgery is performed on her that instills an insatiable thirst for human blood in her. Her victims are also transformed into similar bloodthirsty zombies. When she moves into Montreal to meet her friend, she spreads her infection in the big city. Can she be stopped before it's too late? David Cronenberg and his innovative ideas for unique horror flicks never cease to entertain us. He creates an intriguing plot yet again and shades of a gripping zombie thriller. Besides the clever storyline, it is the skillful makeup work that makes things a bit too real for comfort. The cold and dark atmosphere is projected with perfection as Cronenberg explores the subject of humans fighting mutations from within. We don't mean to make this film sound too grand, because it ultimately is a shocker that seeks to inspire the cheap thrills. But the masterful work of Cronenberg, who repeatedly tests the western values, is what adds to the charm of the storytelling. Marilyn Chambers is a head turner and takes to the role of the protagonist Rose like a fish to the water. Don't give this a miss. They don't make films like this anymore. Buried Alive, 1990. Clint is an average working man who loves his wife with all his heart. However, his wife Joanna is having an affair with a doctor, and the two conspire to get rid of Clint to get his insurance money. They plan to kill him through a drug overdose, but unaware that Clint is still alive, they bury him. He manages to break free, and the niceness in him disappears as he is burning with revenge to get back at those who put him through hell. Buried Alive is an extraordinary tale of betrayal and revenge that will keep you hooked on till the very end. Frank Darabont, the director, went on to make the classic Shawshank Redemption, and this film shows glimpses of the powerhouse of talent that he is. This film ticks off the essential boxes with a tight script and solid direction, supported by a brilliant cast. Tim Matheson and Jennifer Jason Lee are amazing with their performances, and the latter would make you loathe her character, wishing the worst for her betrayal. There are moments in this movie, especially after Clint is buried, which will give you a claustrophobic feel. The background score only enhances the thrilling journey, highlighting the tense moments with some stunning crescendos. In short, Buried Alive is a hidden gem that you must unbury for the ideal thriller on a rainy evening. Basket Case, 1982. Dwayne Bradley checks into his motel room in New York with a backpack and a strange basket. The basket contains his Siamese twin who is surgically removed due to his physical deformities. However, the twin has an evil mind that drives Dwayne to exact revenge on those who were responsible for the separation. When Dwayne falls in love with the receptionist at the doctor's office, he must make a choice between the evil intentions of his brother and his lady love. Sometimes not having a massive budget can be a blessing in disguise, and Basket Case is a standing proof of that. The story comes with an interesting idea, but it mainly focuses on entertaining the audiences with some hilarious moments. The deformed monster is funny enough and looks like a twisted lump of fat and gristle with two clawed arms. As if the appearance wasn't bizarre enough, his actions will leave you reeling with laughter. There is a scene that will leave you in splits, where Dwayne brought a TV for his brother to watch while he would be out on a date. In a hurry, he tunes into a channel that shows nothing but static and leaves, but the tone of the movie changes from silly to nightmarish in a jiffy, as it is good, but as you would expect an exploitation film to get. There is enough gore to please the gore hounds and a lot of exciting moments to keep you on the edge of your seats. Don't go in expecting some serious classic and you won't be disappointed with all the entertainment on offer. Critters, 1986. No matter how many times they make it, movies on alien attacks never get old. This film revolves around a group of dangerous alien creatures called Critters that manage to escape from an alien prison. They land on Earth near a small midwestern town and two intergalactic bounty hunters are in hot pursuit. But when these flesh-eating monsters attack with their razor-sharp teeth, they send the townsmen in a tizzy. 
A family and a farm team up with a local drunk and the bounty hunters for a final showdown. Critters is an engaging sci-fi horror thriller that comes with plenty of humor to keep you amused. The comparison with Gremlins is unfair because this movie is original in its idea and the narrative. The critters are just a mean bunch of aliens that like to eat like there is no tomorrow. Not even the church can save the people and cattle as these monsters start their flesh-eating frenzy. Considering the times, the special effects are impressive and these furry monsters look rather threatening. The film wastes no time in getting to the goofy stuff with all the wackiness that you can imagine. The acting isn't too much to speak about, but then you won't be watching this expecting some Al Pacino classic. All we can say is that after watching this, you would think twice before stepping into a basement. What if some critters are looking around? <laughs> oh, it's so big! Look, it's as big as I am! Wait a minute. Isn't this where that... Eat and Run, 1987. An alien lands on Earth and soon develops a taste for Italian. Only it's Italian people and not Italian food. A detective investigating the case of some missing people soon traces it to this monstrous alien being. The clues are ignored by the others in the police department who seem to think that he is crazy. As the alien goes around eating people like sandwiches, time is running out fast for the ignorant force. The very premise throws an open debate that will leave you in splits. Should a dangerous alien have equal rights? With a plotline full of such bizarre concepts, Eat and Run made quite a name for itself among those with a taste for such films. There are some funny characters, and it is great fun to watch the alien in action as he devours people. Ron Silver is impressive in his role, and the other members of the cast are pretty good as well. Ron Silver plays the role of the cop who wants the harshest punishment for the alien while his Italian girlfriend falls in love with the alien without being aware of the consequences. There are nights when you want to shut your mind out and enjoy some campy humor, and this movie is an ideal pick for such nights. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.